Boys and girls, welcome to another exciting episode of the Joseph series. I'm Auntie Rotendo. And I'm Uncle Gift. But Auntie Ru, before yeah. we talk about anything else, we need to talk about the games. Games. We've been leading with two and you are at I one. I know the boys have been losing two to one, but you're today, going to lose again. No, 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 we're not going to lose. Today, it's a winner takes all. What does that mean, Uncle? It means if the boys win, mm -hmm. meaning me, okay. I'm getting pie in the face. You're getting pie in the face. No way. And of course, if you win, which you're not. Of course we're going to win. I might get pie in the face. Girls, we are going to win this. And if you know that we're going to win, I need you to shout out, girls. Everybody say. Boys, if you think we're going to win, I want you to go. Who, 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 who. Boys, boys, well, boys, Uncle boys. Gift, I cannot wait for you to get pie in the face because that is going to be so exciting. Well, let's see what let's see what's gonna happen. But we've been learning about a great guy, right? Yeah, Joseph. Joseph. He's now my favorite character in the Bible. Joseph was amazing, and we've been learning amazing lesson. Boys so and girls, awesome. do you remember the first lesson we learned? I think I just heard what they told me. Was it about plans? Yeah, I think so. God, God has. has amazing plans for big us. Big plans for us. Do you believe that God has great plans for young Uncle I know he's got great plans for me and I know that he's got great plans for the boys and girls at home. Well, I know that he has a plan for us to win the game today. Uh, please, we're going to see. Okay. But listen number two. Yeah. Do you remember listen number two? I think I do, Uncle Gift. Okay. It was talking about how I'm special. That's right. How you're special. How you are special, boys and girls at home. And God made us unique and really really special so boys and girls i want you to know that in your heart say i am special i am special all right uncle gift and the third lesson, lesson we had last right? week yeah was that we must notice the people ar around us care for them love them and serve them god really wants us to do that and don't forget to pray for them as well that's really really important so auntie Ru, today we've got another great lesson Ooh another joseph lesson another joseph lesson what Boys is and that girls, uncle Gibbs? this lesson is really 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 important so i want you to open your ears okay open your eyes eyes and then open your big hearts because god is going to speak to you today so boys and girls get ready but before we do that let us win this game no but let the boys win the game Uncle Gift, yes. what are we even playing today? Okay, today we're playing the Bible charade game. I love Bible charades! Yeah, well, I don't know if you love losing, but I think that's what's going to happen to you. No way, Uncle Gift. Even the girls know that they're winning oh. again today. It's All going right. to be 3-1. Oh, we'll see. So, are we ready? It's we are ready! Winner takes all. Boys versus girls. Girls versus boys. And I'm sure I'm not getting pie in the face, but Uncle Gift. Do you want to start? I'll go on right ahead. Okay. All right. So we're going to ask Uncle Leon to help us with this game. Where's Uncle, Uncle Leon? Leon? Uncle, Uncle Leon. Leon, where is All right. he? Oh, yay. Uncle Leon. Hey, boys and girls. Hey, Uncle Are you Gift. Ready? I'm Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, boys and girls. So this is how we're going to play. Okay. I've got a word here, a secret word. Mm -hmm. She's not supposed to see it. All right. So I'm going to stick it on her forehead. What does go. it say? No, you can't know. There you go. Can you see? Okay, I can't see it. Okay, so. but then Uncle Leon is going to act out the word and you need to guess the word in 30 seconds. Ah, Uncle Gibbs. Come on. This is going to be interesting. Are we ready? Girls, if you know you're going to win, say yay. Boys and girls, are you ready? On so your mark. Excited. Get set. Go. Okay. What could this be? Alright. You're acting like a woman? Okay, that's kind of dodgy. Who acted like this? Okay, this is rough. Potiphar's wife. Yeah. Right? Ah, how did you guess that? Ah. Yay! Shucks. One and you are at zero. Okay. Girls. Let's go. Boys, 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 come on. Okay. Alright, so it's my turn. Okay, let's stick his stuff. Girls, we're doing this. We're doing this. 30 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Hmm, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a, a, a no. cup, cup, cup bearer. 
He's a, he's the, a king, a king. Mm. Is it, is it Pharaoh? Is it Pharaoh? No! How did you know this? I'm so cute! Boys, 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 boys! How did you know this? Okay, this is 1-1, one, one, but this, I'm sure. It's 1-1. One, one. Okay. My right. turn. Who's next? All right, I'm gonna make There's sure that you don't see this. Here we go. Da -da -da -da. Hmm, who could this be? Show them, show them. Who could that be, boys and girls? There we go. Hmm. Now. Uh, okay. Joseph's brother's prison guard. Prisoner. Ah! Andrew, how are you getting this? Oh, what? Did I get a correct? <laughs> you did. Oh my gosh! Ah. Girls, we are winning! Ah. We are getting this! Girls, we're All not right. getting tied today. Ready? No, no, no. Oh. Alright, there's the wood. Okay, tell me when to start. Let's go. Cry crying? Killing? Uh oh goodness. I got no idea what you're doing. <laughs> what are you doing? You're not uh, you're not going in. Uh dreaming. No! You're oh. not having this. Help no. me boys, what is the answer? Oh you have two more seconds. Uh, two more seconds. One uh, oh, did you get it right? No. You, Uncle Gift, you are sorry, getting tired. Boys, I'm so sorry. Okay. You remember when right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they were burned in the fire? In the they were in the fire. Yeah. All right. But there's still time to come back. No, right. we're not having it. This is so exciting. All right, Uncle Leon, put the word there, okay? We need to win this, boys. Cannot wait to see the pie on your face. All right. So boys, this it is say? it. On your mark, get set. Girls, please help me. Go. Cooking. Chef, um, kitchen, cup bearer, bread maker, bread baking, serving, dreaming, oven. Stop. No. Stop. Stop. No. Stop. What was that? Stop. Stop. What was that? Look at I it. I said baking, and then I said inini. Okay, oh, man. the it's time writing. starts now, Uncle Gifts. Let's see if you have this. Boys and girls, I need your help. I need I your help. You All right, I Uncle hope, Leon. I hope you don't. Sleeping, snoring. Please, girls. Oh, guys, I, I need your help. This. What is he doing? Let's go, let's go, let's go. He's let's sleeping. Go. Uh, sleeping bears. I don't know what. Okay, uh, you have 10 seconds, Uncle Gifts. Uh, 10 boys. seconds. Uh, Nine. Eight, no. seven, uh, six, is that Jesus five, on the boat? Four, is it three, no. two, no. No. girls win again. No. I told you you're getting pie in the face, Uncle Gifts. Pie uh, in the face, Uncle boys, Gifts. I am so sorry. All right. I hope the pie tastes delicious. Cause <laughs> girls, isn't this so exciting? No one. So exciting. Girls, well done. You guys did well. Thank you very much, okay. Uncle Gift. Boys, we're going to get them next time. Don't worry. But you know what? For today, I'm going to take the pie for you. Hi. Let me go get the pie. Yay. All thank right. you, Let Uncle me get Leon. ready. Let me get ready. Oh, this no. is going to be fun. Oh. Boys and girls, I need you to do a countdown for me oh. because this is an oh. exciting moment. Uncle Gift. Yes. You have to kneel. This thing has to go. Do I really have to kneel? You do. Anturu. You have to kneel. Oh, no. This has to go okay. on your whole body. Boys, boys, All just right. remember this. Next time we're going to get the girls. I don't think so. Okay. All right, let's count, let's boys and it. girls. Five, four, three, <laughs> two. Let's go. <laughs> Uncle Gibbs. <laughs> Next time, I think they'll know how to win. Okay? Oh, boys and girls, it tastes horrible. <laughs> It smells eerie too, Uncle Gifts. <laughs> All right, Auntie Roo. That was really I'm fun. Sorry, but you had to get the. That pie. was really fun, boys and girls. Let's get ready to watch the video. I cannot wait. 
It's time for a Bible story. The story of Joseph, part three. Do you need another refresher to get you caught up to speed on what happened last time? Nah, man, I got this. Check it out. I'm gonna do a rapid fire recap. Ready, go. <gasps> Joseph had 11 brothers and they were jerks. And then he had some dreams where everything was bowing down to him and his brothers threw him in a pit and sold him into slavery. And then he worked for Potiphar and then Potiphar's wife was a big jerk face and lied about him and threw him in the jail. Boom. Wow, that was actually pretty impressive. And yes, that's exactly where our story picks up. Joseph was wrongfully accused and thrown into jail, but it wasn't just a regular jail. This was a prison where all of the king's prisoners were sent. So it was extra secure. There is no way anyone was getting out of this place. Yeesh. So I guess that's about it for old Joseph, huh? Well, it was fun while it lasted. The end. No way, man. This is totally not the end of the story. Even though it looked like his situation was getting worse, the Lord gave Joseph great favor with everyone around him. The guards liked Joseph so much that they let him help out around the prison, they didn't even lock him up. Whoa, that's crazy. So that's what you mean when you were saying that through this whole deal, the Lord was with him? You bet. Because Joseph had a great attitude, was respectful, and cared about other people, his time spent in prison wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. In fact, Joseph was so good at noticing people around him and going out of his way to care about them that one day, something happened that would change his life big time. Oh yeah, you said last time there was this big thing coming up. Is this it? Yep. And you're not gonna get me with another to be continued, are you? Well, I'll let you know next time. To be continued. Ah, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I was just joking. We're not done yet. Whew, thank goodness. Really got me good there. So what happened? Since this prison was where all of the king's prisoners were sent, there were two men that used to work directly for the Pharaoh. One was a baker, the other was a cup bearer. Wait, a cup bearer? His job was to put bears in cups? That sounds hard. You gotta either have some big old cups or some tiny bears. No, he wasn't a bear cupper. He was a cup bearer. That meant that he would serve drinks to the Pharaoh in a cup. Ah, uh, gotcha, that makes more sense. So these guys were in jail, huh? Yep, since Joseph was in charge of the prison, the guards assigned these two guys to him. Then one night, both the baker and the cupbearer each had some pretty strange dreams. Oh boy, here we go again with the dreams. Oh, speaking of dreams, last night I had this crazy dream where my ears turned into chili dogs. No, ah, uh -uh. I don't wanna hear any more about your crazy dreams. We're talking about their dreams. The next day, Joseph could tell that something was bothering them. Both the cupbearer and the baker looked like they didn't sleep very well and were all stressed out. Well, I mean, they are in prison, not exactly a stress-free environment. Yeah, but this was different. Joseph was very good at noticing people around him and caring about them. So he asked them what was bothering them. They told him that they had some very strange dreams, but didn't know what they meant. I know what my dream meant, that I shouldn't eat chili cheese dogs right before I go to sleep. Well, that's true. But when Joseph heard that they were troubled by their dreams, he thought of something. Back home, God helped Joseph understand what his dreams meant, so he offered to help interpret the dreams of the baker and the cupbearer. Hey, look at that. Joseph's in jail. These guys go there too. Joseph can interpret dreams. These guys have dreams that need to be interpreted. You weren't kidding about God having a plan for Joseph's life, huh? Exactly. The cupbearer and the baker both told Joseph what their dreams were and God revealed to Joseph what those dreams meant. The cupbearer's dream was about a vine and three branches that sprouted grapes, and he squeezed those grapes into the Pharaoh's cup. Joseph told him what that meant, that in three days, he would be released and would go back to his job serving drinks to the Pharaoh. Good for him, that's awesome. So what about the baker's dream? In the baker's dream, there were three baskets of bread sitting on top of his head. A bunch of birds flew up and started eating out of one of them. Unfortunately, Joseph told him that this meant that in three days, the Pharaoh would have him killed. Yikes, classic case of the old good news, bad news, huh? Did those things come true? They sure did. Three days later, the cupbearer was restored back to his job and the baker was, well, let's just say he sleeps with the fishes. What? Gross. Why would you sleep in a pile of fish? Ugh, that would smell terrible. No, like, you know, he took a dirt nap. Wait, now he's sleeping in the dirt? I mean, that's better than a pile of fish, but still, just sleep in a bed, dude. No, he died. Oh, gotcha. Took a double dip out of the old cosmic cookie jar, huh? Yeah, that's not a phrase. Never mind. So what happened next? Those guys just left and Joseph stayed in jail? Not exactly. Before the cupbearer left, Joseph asked him to tell the Pharaoh about his situation, that he was wrongfully accused of something that he didn't do and thrown into jail. Oh, awesome. This is his chance to get set free. Did the cupbearer remember to tell the Pharaoh about him? Uh, no, he forgot. What? 
You gotta be joking me. So Joseph just stays in prison? Bummer. He did for a while, but not forever. Two years after the cupbearer was released, something happened with Pharaoh. He had some strange dreams and didn't know what they meant. It really bothered him. Hey, this sounds familiar. Someone had a strange dream that needs to be interpreted. Who are you gonna call? Dream Buster! The Pharaoh got all of his wise men, sages, and the magicians together and told them to interpret the dream, but none of them knew what it meant. Then, all of a sudden, the cupbearer remembered that Joseph can interpret dreams. Yes, it's about time you remember about him. Tell the Pharaoh, tell the Pharaoh! That's exactly what he did. Pharaoh called for Joseph to be brought before him and explained what the dreams were. In one dream, there were seven fat, healthy cows standing by the Nile River. Then seven skinny, ugly cows came out of the river and ate up the fat cows. Uh, hold on. Why are you giving me all the grief for my dreams? That was the weirdest dream I've ever heard. The Pharaoh also dreamed that there was a stock of wheat with seven healthy heads of grain. Then seven other heads of grain sprouted that were thin and sun-scorched and they swallowed up the healthy grains. Whoa, talk about weird dreams. Joseph's really got his work cut out for him, huh? What in the world? did those mean? God revealed to Joseph what the dreams meant, and he told Pharaoh everything. He said that there would be seven years of plenty in the land of Egypt, with more than enough food for everyone. But after that, there would be seven years of famine where there would be nothing to eat. Whoa, uh, that's pretty serious. So like, what did Pharaoh do? He was so relieved to know what the dreams meant. He was also so glad to know that the famine was coming in seven years so everyone could start preparing and storing up food. Awesome! But wait, what happened to Joseph? Please don't tell me he goes back to jail. If he goes back to jail, I'm just gonna start swinging. No, he didn't go back to jail. The Pharaoh was so impressed with Joseph that he gave him a job. Pharaoh made Joseph second in command over all of Egypt. What? Seriously? The big number two? Second in command? That is awesome! Yeah, man. The only person in the entire country with more power than Joseph was Pharaoh himself. Man, that is pretty incredible. You were totally right about God having big plans for Joseph's life. Doesn't get much bigger than that. No kidding. Joseph's life was totally changed. And it probably wouldn't have happened like that if he didn't notice the people around him back when he was in jail. And something else was about to happen that nobody expected. Nice try. I see you coming a mile away. You're about to do another to be continued, aren't you? I sure am. Bam! Yep, I called it. Totally called it. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Uncle Phil, and I am so happy to be on the show today. You know what, boys and girls? I've really missed you guys. Right, so boys and girls, today is going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing morning of children's ministry. But you know what, boys and girls? I am with a special guest today. Are you guys ready? Today, I'm with Chef Shiri. Hello, boys and girls. Chef Shiri here. I am so happy to be here. Uncle Phil, guess what? What? I have a surprise for the kids. Oh, wow. I love surprises. Chef Shiri, tell me. I'm here to teach the children a recipe. A recipe? Okay, we're, we're supposed to be doing something else, but I love recipes. Chef Shiri, keep going. We are making Matlora sandwich. Oh, my what sandwich? Matlora sandwich. Yes, Uncle Phil, I said my daughter sandwiches. Okay, so why exactly are we doing my daughter sandwiches? I love them, Uncle Phil, and I think the boys and the girls will love them as well. I'm going to add some onions, some broccoli, yeah. and a dish yeah. of mayonnaise. The it's name so delicious. Okay, wait, the name, I, I don't really know what Mad Madora are. Do, do you want to test, Uncle Phil? Where, where are they? Boys and girls, do you want Uncle Phil to taste? Let's, 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 let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, try so it. where are they, uh, Chef? That they're by the table. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, boys and girls, I've never seen Madora. Look, I, I have heard that people like them, but let me just... Oh! They so, sorry, Chef, she, delicious. What is, boys and girls, what is this? Chef, she, please, can you just tell me what this is? Come on, try it, Uncle Phil. Try, 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 try. Okay, try, boys and try. girls. Look, I've never had one of these before, and you know what? I'm gonna give it a go, okay? Are you ready? I think on this one you're gonna have to count me down. Yeah! Now tell me, do you like them? Come on! Come on! Swallow it! They're, they're not bad. It's not something I'm used to. 
But would I recommend it to you boys and girls? Give it a try. But, but, but before we go on, Chef Shiri, what is this Madora sandwich thing? Uncle Phil, did you not watch the video about Joseph? Joseph? Yes, yes. it said there will be seven years of plenty mm -hmm. followed by seven years of fermine. Mm -hmm. So I am going to make a steak loads of Madora sandwiches, mm -hmm. store them, and in seven years time, take them and eat them. Seven years? Boys and girls, are you going to want to eat Madora sandwiches? After seven years, Chef Please, Shiri. Please, trust me, Uncle Phil. I got this. But the only thing is that I will not be sharing my Madora sandwiches with Jordan and Officer Gululu. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Why wouldn't you want to share? We're trying to teach the boys and girls listen, good things. Listen, listen, Uncle Phil. Those guys really annoyed me. I spent the whole day making a delicious meal for them. Yeah? And, the, and they did not even eat it. Can you imagine how rude and insulting it is? Yeah, you know what, Chef Shiri, it does sound terrible. But you know what, when you think about the Joseph story, Chef Shiri, it's all about forgiveness. No, Uncle Fios, really, really hurt, to be honest. Oh. I woke up at 4 a.m. to cook for those guys, but they didn't even recognize the hard work I did for them. Okay, just wait, just wait, Chef Shiri. Now, boys and girls, Chef Shiri has been hurt. And, you know, Chef Shiri, I'll be honest with you, you know, People do hurt each other, but you know, forgiveness is key. And Jesus wants us to forgive. Even with Joseph, if you remember, he even forgave his brothers and a lot of bad things happened. Do you understand that, Chief? Ah, Uncle Phil, this is so hard. Why do I have to forgive people who are mean to me? Well, let me explain. Boys and girls, people will always be mean. And I know sometimes they don't want to be mean, but they'll be mean. But you know what? The Bible, Chef she says we must forgive over and over and over again. You know what? Can I ask you a question, Chef Shiri? Yeah? Are you perfect, Chef Shiri? Perfect? What do you mean perfect? I... My food is perfect. Well, your food may be perfect, but boys and girls, are you perfect? Have you ever done wrong to anyone, Chef Shiri? Uh, well... Well, I'm not, but no one is perfect. Exactly. So that means that sometimes when you are mean to others, Chef Shiri, you also need to forgive. I hadn't thought of it that way, oh. now that you've said it. Now, Chef Shiri, another thing is, can I tell you the reason why it's so good to forgive? Yeah, yeah, tell me, please. First and foremost, boys and girls, to forgive someone is a decision. Okay? You have to decide to forgive someone. And when you make that decision, boys and girls, I promise you, God gives you peace. You know, he makes you happy and he blesses you. Do you but, understand but, that, Chef But, jeez, Uncle Phil, what if they never stop being mean to me? Surely I can't forgive them twice. I can forgive them once. Yes, once. But twice. Hybo. Hybo. I understand where Chef Shiri is coming from. And I know it hurts when someone does you bad, Chef Shiri. But you know what, Chef Shiri? We need to keep Jesus' word in us. We have to forgive over and over again. Ah, uh, really, Uncle Phil? Yes, boys and girls, I'm hoping you understand. What, do you, what about you, Chef Shiri? Oh, man. I guess I then choose to forgive Jordan and Officer Gululu. Oh. Forgiveness is such an important lesson, like you've said. I wonder how many boys and girls need to forgive someone today. Oh, well, you know what, boys and girls, if you've got a friend that you're arguing with or you're not getting along even with your mom and dad, you know what, boys and girls, you have to find it in your heart to make that decision to forgive. Just like how Chef Shiri has now learned about forgiveness, mm. you also need to forgive, okay? Even if it's your mom or your dad or your sister. I know, boys and girls, sometimes you look at your sister or your brother and say, Uncle Phil, we fight all the time. But forgiveness is important. There's a verse of scripture that I can just think of right now, and that comes from 1 John 1 verse 9. And it says, Jesus forgives all our sins. Wow. And you know what? If Jesus forgives all our sins, I think, boys and girls, we need to forgive everyone else. Parents, like I always say, open your Bibles at home. Teach your kids. Discuss with them. Enjoy the word. And with that, Chef she, do you know what I think we should do for the boys and girls now? What, Uncle Phil? I think it's time to pray. What do you think, Chef she? That's a good idea, Uncle Phil. So what we're going to do, boys and girls, we never end without praying. So what I want to do is I'm going to stretch my hand and I'm going to pray. 
Okay, boys and girls, let's close our eyes. Shift she, are you ready? I'm ready. Bow your head. Oops, thank you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the boys and girls out there. We want to thank you, Father, that they may learn how to forgive. And Father God, they may know that when they forgive, you give them peace, you bless them, and you're so amazing, Lord God. And you know what? If everybody agrees with that, everybody say... Amen! You know, Chef Shiri, Amen. it's the first time I've tasted a Madura, and I really, really you enjoyed really it. You really enjoyed them, right? Would I eat one again? Wait till I make a sandwich for you. I don't want to eat it after seven years though, boys and girls. Anyway, boys and girls, we love you. See you next week. Bye-bye.